Hey everybody, I'm Amy. Welcome to my channel and thanks so much for joining me for a Dungeons and Dragons inspired craft. Today we're going to make a St. Patty's Day themed tavern sign that can also be used as a serving tray or a dice rolling tray. I want to give a huge thanks to everyone who makes the Geeky McFangirl channels possible with a pledge of a dollar or more a month on Patreon. If you're enjoying the show, click the Patreon link below the video to support me. You can also support the channel for free by subscribing, liking, and sharing. You can find links for all the materials you will need for this project in the description below the video, both on YouTube and at CraftyMcFangirl.com. For this project, I'm using a Folk Art Layering Stencil from Plaid Crafts. To start out, I painted a 10 by 10 inch Plaid Crafts wood canvas panel with black acrylic paint, both on the outside and on the inside. The outside will serve as my tavern sign and the inside will be a serving tray or dice rolling tray. Once the black paint was dry, I used the shamrock stencil to outline two large shamrocks onto the tray, in opposite corners. I painted them in with dark and light green. I used a dark thicket green and a green called Scottish Highland. Then I tried my hand at drawing two smaller shamrocks in the other two corners. A four-leaf clover is basically four hearts attached at the points with a stem. I painted in the smaller clovers in a citron green and a kelly green. You can mix and match colors or use the same green for all of the clover. Go with your personal preference. While the shamrock paint was drying, I decided to use the second piece of the layering stencil, which has stars and dots all over it. I thought it would make a very pretty design for the edge of the tray. I used a pure gold acrylic paint on a foam dauber to apply it. I worked section by section using a heat gun to dry the paint as I went. Anytime a little bit of the pattern didn't quite resolve from the stencil, I used a fine liner brush to add back in some of the detail. I made a wash with black paint and water, and then using a wide paintbrush, I gave the inside of the tray a nice thick wash to knock back the color and give it a used appearance. While the paint was still wet, I used a paper towel to remove some of the wash, and then I dried it with a heat gun. I decided to add a little black wash to a few spots on the edges as well. So it looks like the tray side of the project is finished. Now it's time to work on the front, which will function as a tavern sign. For this portion, I'm using the third part of the layering stencil. So instead of outlining the shamrock shape, I'm going to give a shot at stenciling the shape with a foam dauber. I pounced the paint inside the stencil in two different shades of green, and then I used a small paintbrush to clean up the edges. With the two large clovers in the opposite corners, I decided to fill in the rest of the sign with smaller hand-drawn shamrocks. I went with three different sizes and drew some of them off the edge of the sign. I left the middle of the piece empty because that's where my lettering is going to go. And then I started filling in the smaller shamrocks with paint. I used an olive green that blended into the background a little too much, so on those clovers I added some brighter green accents. Once the clovers were painted, I used a water and black paint wash to cover them. I used a wide brush and painted the wash in all directions to avoid the appearance of brush strokes. When I patted the wash off with a paper towel, I found out that I'd worked too slowly and the wash had dried too much to be removed. 
so I went over it with water to remove just a little bit of the wash before it could dry completely. I wanted the sign to look weathered and dirty, but I also want the clover to be visible. When I was happy with the background, it was time to add the lettering on the sign. I decided to make my lettering two inches tall, so I made sure all the paint was dry, and then I measured four inches up from the bottom and four inches down from the top. I marked the lines to guide my writing, and I found the middle point to start from. My tavern name is going to be the Lucky Keg. I figured out the middle letter of the name is the C in the word Lucky. So I worked from the center outward, in both directions, and I used a pencil so the lines could be erased later. Once I was happy with the lettering, it was time to fill them in with gold acrylic paint and a fine liner paintbrush. I started with all the horizontal lines, and then I went back and made all the vertical lines and curves, adding in small little serifs onto the ends of each letter. I dried the paint with a heat gun and applied a little bit of the black paint wash over some areas of the letters and dried the wash. Once the tavern name was complete, I added a thin gold border line around the entire sign. I made the line look thinner and thicker in some areas so it appeared weather beaten and old, like the gold had worn off in places. When I was done with the tavern sign, I looked at the tray side again and decided that the green paint appeared too bright. I wanted to knock back the brightness a little more to match the sign side. So I gave the tray one more very quick coating with the black paint wash and dried it one final time. And here's the final product. The project can be used as a tavern serving tray for cups and snacks during gaming sessions, or as a tavern sign, decoration, or even as a dice rolling tray. However you use it, I hope you have fun creating your own sign for your own role-playing campaign.